guys, welcome back to California Live Podcast. And today we have a very special, amazing and magical guest. This gentleman saved more than 2,000 lives already, and this amount is growing. Please, let's have a warm welcome for our guest, Timur Nazarov. Doctor Timur Nazarov. Yes. I mean, I'm not big on titles, but thank you for kind introduction. I know that my, my partner, Sergey, he said that when you send him an email, your titles end up on a full sheet of paper. Right. Yeah, right. so you have a lot of titles. Yeah, but again, I'm... I'm I'm not big on titles. I'm I'm just another physician who is blessed to do what I, I do. And, uh, you know, I'm fortunate to be able to help the kids and parents in our community. So thank you again for the introduction. Well, you're definitely not just a physician, because <laughs> I know you do a lot of charity. You helped a lot of people all around the world, not, in, not just in the States. Dr. Nazarov, let's begin with your story. Where are you coming from? your backstory and how did you end up being a surgeon in the States? Yeah, so, uh, you know, I grew up in a family of physicians. My mother is a, you know, was prominent pediatrician. My grandmother was in healthcare and uh, extended family had a lot of uh, physicians. So I grew up wanting to be like my uncle, who is a, a very well-known psychiatrist in Moscow. So that was my aspiration, and that's you know how I got into medical school, thinking that's who that's what I'm gonna do, psychiatry. During my first year in medical school back in Azerbaijan, uh, there was a competition um, to earn scholarship to come to the United States. Um, I spoke English already at that time, and you know I had you know I was pretty good student. I was you know top of my class and had pretty you know wide world view. So. Uh, I passed that uh, exam, I did very well, and I was selected one of 35 people to come to study in the States. Uh, and uh, once I was here, I knew I'm going to do the medical school. So after the college, I applied, uh, I got accepted into medical school, and I started rotation, still thinking that probably I'm going to do the psychiatry. But I, I think it's kind of DNA. The first day I walked into the surgery rotation, I knew I'm going to be a surgeon. Um, it's just a fascinating field, as a, the field that changes every day, grows every day. There are constantly improvements. It's a lifetime learning, nonstop, and that makes it so fascinating. Thank you for, for sharing. Um, I come from a medical family as well, oh, and cool. what I've noticed, uh, the difference between Central Eastern Europe, um, former USSR countries, in here it's more of a business than treatment. Correct. Um, do you practice preventative care or you are just saving lives when it's already, you know, the dead end? Yeah, no, I think I believe in preventative care. You know, with a pediatric cardiothoracic surgery, there is not always preventative, but what I believe is in education. Mm -hmm. I believe that educating the families, educating the community, regionally, locally, nationally, saves lives. You know, what are the risk factors of having a child with a heart condition? You know, a lot of people don't know. Yeah. Exposure to certain agents, exposure to certain chemicals, not getting prenatal care, and being surprised when things happen. So while, in a way, my profession is, you know, what I call people laugh as a cut and saw to fix things, I do believe that the education, education of the community saves lives. So yes, I mean, it is business. That's how it's, you know, discussed, you know, looked upon at some, uh, by some people, but it's not for me. For me, more of a lifestyle. And educating people in the community is a big part of this lifestyle. It's a, it's a tough lifestyle. I know that my parents, they had to be on the call 24-7. 365 yes yeah it's a choice it's a conscious choice and if that's what your heart wants is that what you know where your gratification comes from then that's the job for you that is true and obviously I could tell that you're passionate about it and you love what you do but how about your family you have yeah I mean uh, it's a great question it's tough on the family I mean Sergey who's you know a close friend and he's been kind to understand what happens. My family has been kind in understanding. 
but there is no question you you may have to leave your daughter's 16th birthday or not go see your parents because you got a phone call uh, from the hospital but again um, when you see the smile on the face of a parent or when you see the a sick kid who would die otherwise walk out of the hospital it definitely makes it worth it on your personal level but also your family understands that you know i try to make sure that my kids are involved that they educate you know sometimes my kids come to the rounds with me and you know because i want them to understand what it takes understanding questioning anal analyzing that absolutely kind of stuff. absolutely you know they often sit through the lectures with me you know uh, so i'm I, I think that to make long answer short it is tough on the family but again uh, a lot of us are blessed to have an understanding people around us you know to understand what we do i also do believe in uh preventative care and in uh in uh, maintenance i Absolutely. would say it's like driving a car if you 100%. don't maintain it it's gonna crash 100 percent. the same thing with our bodies it's important that we put in what we eat Absolutely. let's um focus a little bit on your educational moments for people of different classes ages uh what are the main points bullet points that you would uh, suggest people to dive in and to educate themselves more let's say primary school age in order to be you know well maintained and prevent possible problems yeah I, I think that you know common things are common I mean from the early age just educating the children you know that you know your body is your temple and that you got to serve it and you got to eat well take care of yourself and practice self-care I think that uh, you know my when I gave a presentation for you know, at uh, go red for women mm -hmm. that was my main topic you know self-care and I didn't choose it randomly I think that self-care is something that should be installed from early age from primary school middle school and so on you know avoiding the bad habits you know not smoking not drinking not not exhausting yourself i mean you want your kids to be determined and driven but at the same time you want to teach them the right habits from day one which are which are you know again let's say we talk about the diet you yeah. know the sugar is continues to be one of the biggest unknown killers in our country or w worldwide you know sugar is available everywhere candy is fun you know mcdonald's is easy uh but those things that something sorry that become a habit so they it actually becomes a sugar dependence it becomes almost sugar addiction and this leads to multiple long-term problems you know maybe in early in our life our body compensates for it nobody knows about it but as we age all the problems come along including diabetes for example but because it was not installed from the beginning the right habits it becomes a problem so I would say the diet one of them and uh, you know again getting enough sleep is very important uh, nowadays in the age of internet iPhone you know and millions of shows people don't get enough sleep people spend too much time watching TV I mean it has been definitively demonstrated that spending extensive time playing video games and uh, watching TV brings to attention deficit disorder in kids so this needs to be monitored and prevented among many other things if you were to suggest um, what is the amount of hours that is enough for the body there are so many debates you know four hours five hours eight hours whatever what is your belief perspective and um, maybe your personal experience yeah I think that well my personal experience is no example because of my lifestyle but yeah. however that said I say I, I, I think that the the younger the child is the more the hours so in a younger child 
you know, nine to 10 hours of sleep is what's required. Uh, people are actually surprised because most of the time people say, oh, eight hours. But again, looking back in the younger kids, you know, it's nine, 10 hours. Mm -hmm. But even in adult, you really want to have quality seven to eight hours of sleep. Mm -hmm. Continuous, uninterrupted sleep. Now, there are people who do variations of sleep, biphasic, triphasic sleep, where you sleep four hours in, at night, four hours during the day. Um, I don't think it has been established as a healthy habit. Mm -hmm. It may or may not increase the productivity, but for me, I would say that minimum of seven better eight hours of uninterrupted sleep is what needed. Unfortunately, nowadays, most of us don't get it, yeah. but that's what needed. Um, does it matter when do you go to sleep to get these, let's say, seven hours? Yeah, I guess, I guess again, um, it depends who you talk to. You know, in general, generally, you know, going to bed at 10 o'clock and waking up around six, but I think that varies. Mm -hmm. Most importantly, um, you want to have that uninterrupted sleep. Uh, t uh, as a typical pattern, as our body works, you know, going to sleep at night is a better thing. So, you know, in the evening, be that 9, 10, 11, and get in the sleep. You know, that's why it's not recommended to sleep extensive hours during the day, because it kind of messes up your cycle. So again, I don't have exact, you know, hour, but I would say, you know, you after nine and before 12 to get quality sleep. There is another debate that people say that, oh, I'm, a, I'm an owl or I'm a morning person. Um, do you believe it makes sense? Because to me, the way I researched it, um, in the past, we're all waking up with the sunrise and Correct. everyone was going to bed with the sunset-ish. But now we have these two groups debating and fighting each other. What is your perspective on that? Yeah, I, th I think that, in my personal opinion, you know, falling asleep and waking up with, falling asleep at, in the, at dark and waking up uh, with the sunrise, it kind of organically goes with our body rhythms, mm -hmm. with our internal quote-unquote mechanism, internal clockers. So I'm more of a proponent of uh, not being a night owl. Uh, that said, the problem is that nowadays, again, in the age of internet, you can find article justifying anything. So that is a, that is a problem. Dr. Google. Dr. Google, yeah. I mean, Dr. Google is a very powerful physician. Unfortunately, that's the case. And uh, unfortunately, Dr. Google can give you 10 opinions on 10 subjects and can substantiate it. Yeah. yeah. So I, you know, to be honest with you, when I see my patients, let's say for pediatric cardiac disease, I tell them all my patients have my cell phone number and I'm available for them 24 seven. And my conversation with them is that if you're worried, if you're concerned, use me as your resource. I promise I'm better than Dr. Google when it comes to doctor, you know, pediatric heart oh, yeah, surgery. Obviously. So use that phone number because those opinions often are not well reviewed and uh, I actually feel that both maybe even AI and Dr. Google can be dangerous. Absolutely. I have, uh, I'm on the same page with you and uh, it's really a blessing when you can find a true doctor who helps you heal instead of keeping you on medical oh, yeah. treatments. Um, let's get back to nutrition. You mentioned sugar. Let's discuss and maybe you could share with us a simple, basic, useful, practical um, recipe or let's say nutrition plan which kids, adults, everyone could use uh, in order to maintain our temple, as you said, healthy. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, it's, it's not something that, you know, it's new, it's been discussed many times, but again, the Mediterranean diet rich in the fruits and vegetables continues to be the cornerstone of the good healthy diet you know if you look at uh, people in italy and greece uh, if you look at you know in uh, 
population in certain countries where where the main diet is Mediterranean diet, the uh, longevity overall is much longer than the average population. Um, I am a big advocate when it comes to foods. I am a big advocate of fish. You know, fish has omega-3, yeah. and omega-3 is a huge component to avoid the, not just, it's just not just good diet, but you have all, a lot of good things in it. You get a protein, you get fatty acids that help you. You know, I, I have a, you know, funny story about, you know, again, my family. So I have, my mom was a prominent physician, you know, super smart. My older aunt she's aunt she's 86 wow yeah she's the first md dds phd in the country mm -hmm. and she still is a consultant for the medical school and uh, their oldest sister she's 88 she still teaches russian wow right and they grew up eating uh, fish oil mm -hmm. not pills Actually, Actual real oil. fish oil, to the point that my mom would never go to a restaurant where they serve fish because the smell of fish oil stayed with her. Mm -hmm. So she would eat fish, but mm -hmm. not. My, I, I think that you know it's very uh, anecdotal example, but I think that fish products, fish oil, help development of the brain, maintains your healthy, and. You know, if you look on the Japan, Japan has one of the longest living population in the world. And a lot of their diet, if not the main component, is fish. So I would say Mediterranean diet, and also a lot of Mediterranean diet has pescatarian stuff, you know, uh, dishes. So that would be my vote. Do you recommend to stay away from meat? Yeah, I mean, in general, yes, though meat has its own, um, you know, advantages. Okay. So it has protein. It uh, helps to build the muscle if it's needed. And my concept with this thing, with the red meat, um, again, I'm not a nutritional specialist, but again, this is something you have a one portion a week, something you use in moderation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I have a lot of friends who are vegetarian and they get their protein from, the, uh, from other sources. Um, I still occasionally have red meat, but not very often, maybe once every two weeks or so. I think that it does not need to be eliminated from the diet at all, altogether, but it must be used in moderation. You mentioned Italy in, uh, in your um, story and, uh, you know, they have a lot of pasta, they have pizza. Uh, what is your perspective on the dough, on different dough products? Yeah, I think, again, it's, it comes to moderation. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, portions that we consume here is nowhere close to portions that are consumed in, in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, pizza we have here, pizza in Italy, you know, is a bit different. You know, most of pizza in Italy is a thin crust, and uh, so it's a little bit different approach. Um, I don't have particular opinion as far as, you know, how much harm it brings, but again, my vote would be to use that in, in moderation. Because, you know, again, it's a uh, heavily carbohydrate-based diet. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's hard to tell somebody not to do it at all. Mm -hmm. But I think, again, the key word here is moderation. Absolutely. Um, you know, another funny thing which comes to my mind when you mentioned Italy and then the temple, the body is our temple. Italians, sometimes they say that uh, my body is the Catholic Church. It's full of bread, <laughs> wine, and sin. <laughs> is that right? Yeah, that's a great expression. <laughs> I did not know that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to steal that one. <laughs> I'm happy to share. <laughs> what about um, some examples? Uh, obviously, we need to have moderation. We have to have uh, probably a little bit of accounting on how much of the protein, what type of protein we consume, carbs, uh, fats. What, is, what are your examples of decent, healthy, 
let's say breakfast lunch and dinner yeah again i think that uh, you know the the breakfast i would say has to should be you know as usual not heavily carbohydrate based mm -hmm. you know if it's a carbohydrate you want to you don't want to have a what i call super simple carbohydrates you know super sweet tea yeah you know if you having a, something as a carbohydrate have a banana mm -hmm. you know it's a healthy project product as complex carbohydrates and it will release you know glucose over the period of the day um, so you know i myself like tea and banana um, i think the eggs again it's a protein heavy um, i think that yolk can be not necessarily good for you but if you use a uh, egg white which is protein heavy it's a good choice um, the breakfast should be a solid breakfast and as the day goes you know on you want to maintain your energy level so the you know a good salad with chicken or good salad with salmon would be a great choice for the uh, lunch or you know some afternoon break so no carbs no carbs mm -hmm. no ideally no carbs and the evening again evening you want to keep it light okay you know there is a saying right or wrong you know keep breakfast for yourself give lunch to your friend and give dinner to your enemy yeah right so that's how i think about it so when would you recommend using taking in carbs and maybe some examples of healthier carbs yeah again when it comes to carbs i mostly think about fruits okay yeah you know strawberries raspberries so no know, rice no yeah i mean again it is hard to recommend against completely eliminating it yeah well each case is individual each I get case it, but individual. we are just talking general yeah, yeah but yes if you um you know trying to lose weight or maintain weight uh i i think that again when it comes to carbohydrates it's a fruits and vegetable based mm -hmm. you don't want you want to minimize simple carbohydrates and you know things that fall on the simple carbohydrates pasta pizza rice bread and uh, again it is especially the way we grew up it's hard to eliminate it completely but you just at least need to be aware absolutely you mentioned right now that uh, breakfast should be solid and I've noticed that a lot of people including kids they neglect breakfast Correct. they would just run to the school and um, I've also done some research before meeting you um, they're getting pretty pretty bad let's put it you know straightforward uh lunches you know yeah. some cookies Absolutely. candies yeah. pizzas whatever yeah. junk um i'm honestly terrified because that's what you invest in your body growth 100%. and what's going to happen nah, it's, it's going to be a big surprise but uh why from the medical point from healthcare point breakfast is important yeah, it's kind of set you up for the day you know you keep full you it provides energy to go on with the day and be productive. Uh, again, if you have a complex carbohydrate, like a fruit, like banana or, or some other fruits, it provides you this background of energy releasing and keeping, letting you to keep moving. I mean, it definitely beats eating heavy pasta before you go to bed, right? I mean, when you, I mean, you rightfully so mentioned the lunches, right? I mean yes unfortunately if you go to schools or even to other places it's cookies chips and pasta and pizza and the problem is that it's all bad food yeah so i think that's where this podcast our conversation ongoing education of the community or what's good or what's bad for you continues to be extremely important absolutely well uh, we'll definitely keep going and we'll be happy if you could you know join us on more episodes and we could go deeper into details and maybe we could have questions from our viewers absolutely it would be my pleasure my last question um back to health the temple um except for good sleep proper nutrition uh we have to move we have to exercise we have a lot of debates about is cardio good for you or not is running jogging good for you or not um, what is your perspective on exercises on cardio exercises there are different types of them 
um, from medical perspective, maybe from athletic perspective? Yeah, I think that what you mentioned, you, you use the key word, moving. I think moving is important. So uh, again, I'll, I'll give you an example of my dad. He's 86. So he, even today, he walks around two hours a day. Mm -hmm. You know, historically, he always would knew that dad is going to walk around for three days. It doesn't have to be running. In fact, you know, as we get an older, uh, the extreme type of exercise exercises may become dangerous. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, all of us heard the story where uh, 60 years old was running a marathon and collapsed and he didn't yeah. make it. Uh, you know, recently it was in Sacramento B, a vet, a, a, a trained guy, ran the marathon and had severe rhabdomyolysis where his muscles just basically released so much lactic acid that he collapsed, coded, and I don't know, it's been significant time. I actually don't know if he ever made it out of the hospital. Mm -hmm. So I think as we age, I would caution against extreme exercises. However, daily exercise, and it can have different shape or form. If you want to do strength training, you can do strength training. If you want to just go for a walk, go for the walk. I think that moving is the key part here. I am, as we get an older, as I am getting older, a bit, a bit cautious about extreme type of exercises, you know, running, running a more marathon or go cl extreme climbing. Um, what about jogging? A lot of people are promoting jogging. Me, personally, I stand against it and get, unless you need that for your main sport because it has a lot of negative effect on your ankles, your joints, on your spine. Uh, what is your perspective? So again, you know, you and I, we can get some backlash after this interview. I'm not a jogger. This is what we want. So people start thinking. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not a jogger. Uh -huh. I, I, I don't think that uh, it's good for your joints. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's uh, taking a toll. And I know they come up with different shoes and, you know, different ways to manage it. But uh, Spend money. Well, spend money. <laughs> I'm personally not a jogger. Mm -hmm. um, I, I go for long walks okay. and enjoy the city and our river. Do you go up, down hill or you just go on flat surface? Yeah, I mean, you know, again, I'm, I'm, I would go on an occasional hike, but again, I'm not an extremist uh -huh. when it comes to that. Uh, exercise does not need to be dangerous. Yeah. Right. So the way I look at it. So, yeah, I mean. I, I would say that, yes, we go up and down and we walk around, but again, I usually do not get involved in something extreme. I think that activity is activity, and what's important is to stay safe, but at the same time keep moving. So I think that's, uh, but yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, and again, realizing it, it, it uh, we know we may get a backlash because there is so much research shows that you know cardiovascular exercise is great for you and it is but it doesn't necessarily specify what type exactly um in my case um what i do love and i, I feel really good about it is bicycle and just the, the you know the, the gym thing which you know runs uh, cardios and elliptical yeah. it's mild on joints it gives you different strength um you know regimes which you could change to give your, your, your body, your heart a little bit more intensity, but it doesn't give you uh, that uncomfortable feeling which you get after running. Yeah, I mean, you and I in the same boat. I'm the same type of person, but I will tell you, I'm sure there is a jogger out there who will tear us apart about that we don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> I, always, I always welcome those who want to have challenge with us. Correct. <laughs> and I'm happy that we're on the same boat. We're safe. Right, exactly. If if something hits the fan, we have a professional doctor who can <laughs> right, well, who can well, fix it. I hope you don't need my help, but yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but it's better to, to be in touch right. and to be on the same page and to be on the same boat. Right on. Dr. Nasser, thank you so much for coming, for sharing your experience. Guys, I'm um, super happy to be able to share Dr. Nasserov's opinion and uh, experience with you. Please make sure to send us your questions, your concerns. Uh, you're welcome to send us your opinions uh, and uh, I hope that Dr. Nasserov will find another time to come join us again and yeah, we'll be absolutely. answering your questions. Thanks for having me, my Thank pleasure. Thank you, sir. Great to be here. Likewise. Take care.